Hello Bruins! Today we are continuing our source type series with a quick explanation of primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. The easiest way to think of these sources is the lower the number, the closer the source is to the original subject. These terms are commonly used in history studies, but they will also come up in other areas. A primary document is an original text or recording, usually with some kind of historical significance. For example, the Declaration of Independence is a primary document, as is a novel like Moby Dick. It's the main original source that we are referencing. A secondary source is one step removed from that. It discusses the primary document, usually summarizing or analyzing the primary document and putting it into some type of context. So an article discussing the circumstances leading to the Declaration of Independence, or a book analyzing the themes and symbolism of Moby Dick, would both be examples of secondary sources. A tertiary document is yet another step removed. It summarizes the findings of various secondary sources to provide a general overview of how that original text is viewed. These consist of encyclopedia and reference book entries. Again, it will be a short summary of the document and its context. Tertiary sources are usually considered reliable, but are never considered scholarly, because they don't have the depth of detail we need for that qualification. Primary, secondary, and tertiary sources are pretty easy to understand once you get the hang of it, but can cause a lot of confusion when you don't know what they mean. If you have questions about these source types or anything else related to library research, please contact your Morris librarians.